Welcome to episode 46 of Think Big with Michael Zellner, all positive, no politics. My guest today is Emily LaForce. Emily is an artist and a sous de, I'll make sure I pronounce this right, sous chef de cuisine at River Oaks Restaurant in Memphis under Master Jose Gutierrez. She started working in restaurants when she was just 16 years old, and you can find her murals at several different businesses and restaurants throughout the Memphis area too. And she's going to talk about the one behind her today. Welcome to the show, Emily. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Tell us something interesting about yourself most people don't know. Oh my gosh. Um, I once worked on a tilapia farm in McKenzie, Tennessee for the summer. <laughs> what did you do and, then? Uh, uh, I had to be there at five o'clock in the morning and I'd have to wear these waders and get in the tanks and help clean them out, feed the fish. Uh, I would have to help net them up. It was just, it was a very uh, smelly job, but it was interesting. I bet that was interesting. Five o'clock in the morning as a college student and having to do that. Wow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it takes a lot of discipline. So good for you. So, Emily, you grew up in Memphis and you went to school at St. Benedict at Auburndale. Do you have a few teachers there that made a strong impact on your life? Hmm. I don't know. I mean, they were all, honestly, they were all really good there. All the teachers there were great. Um, Miss Bess, Miss Joan Bess, she was my French teacher and she was really nice and I loved her. That's awesome. So you ran track and field in high school and you're still part of a record there in the 3200 meter relay back in 2008. Do you remember that day? Oh, yes. <laughs> Tell us about it. Um, we had been practicing all year. It was regionals. Uh, we were up against some of our rivals and uh, it was, it was rough. It was against St. Agnes actually. And they were like the best at the time. And we just pushed it through. We kicked it through. We got it. I think the record was nine minutes and 35 seconds for the four by eight, but it was, it was great. <laughs> so do you still have any contact with anybody that you on the track team and that you went to school with? Uh, we talked, I haven't talked to them in a while, but I saw one of them recently at a, an art thing. I can't remember when I'm so, my memory is so bad, but we do need to reconnect again. I bet that was a lot of fun. Um, you went to college at uh, Bethel University in McKinley, Tennessee, where you were also on the track team there and you were a leader on the team. What do you remember most about your time at Bethel? Mm. At the time, we didn't have an art major at the school, so I was wondering why, since it was a liberal arts school. And so myself and a couple others teamed up together, and we wrote a petition, and we got a bunch of people to sign it and said that we need to have an art major because it doesn't make sense that we don't. So now they actually have one, and I feel like that played a role in getting that. Did, you, or did they have any art classes when you were there? Yeah, they had art classes and the art teachers there are great. Uh, Jason Cole and Poppy Scarborough, I, I love both of them. They're amazing. But now we finally have the major to fit it. So That's awesome. Oh, yeah, you definitely had something to do with that. So that's a great feeling. One of your friends from Bethel said, quote, I would probably trade a couple of months of my life right now if I could have a cheeseburger and Cajun fries from the old <laughs> Bethel Grill from Emily LaForce. If Bethel wants to oh pull pull up for a homecoming they need to pay her to do a pop-up event I'll be there for sure unquote that must have been some amazing burger and fries Emily it was made with love <laughs> how did you did you work at the grill when you were there yes uh, I worked in the grill during school and then uh, when school shut down for the summer it wasn't really open so that's why I ended up getting the job at the fish farm because I needed some in income but it was great we got to make coffee. We made uh, all sorts of coffee drinks. We made pizzas, salads, burgers, stuff like that. Awesome. So after college, you and a friend decided to hitchhike out West and ended up in, in California working on a pot farm. <laughs> what led to that decision to head West and what was that like for you? So honestly, I had been in, okay, let's, I'll backtrack a little bit. Okay. 
I was at the Cooper Young Arts Festival. At, I had a little art booth there around 2012. And this guy came up to me and he was dressed as a banana and he was handing out condoms to people. And I said, that's kind of odd. And I said, well, I told him, I'll give you some beers if you dance around my booth to kind of bring some attention to the art. He said, okay, as long as you give me beers, I'll dance around your booth. All sorts of people came because they're wondering why is there this banana just dancing around this <laughs> And uh, he actually invited me out to Montana to this rainbow gathering out in the woods. But unfortunately, I got kind of stranded out there after a month living in the woods. And my friend Roger met me out there and he said, well, I guess they kind of left you out here. So do you want to leave with me? I don't really know what we're going to do, but we're going to try to get back to Memphis. And I said, OK, I didn't have any money. I didn't have my phone. Uh, so we tried to hitchhike back to Memphis and then we got stranded in Winslow, Arizona, just on the side of the road. <laughs> How did you go from, from where you were to Arizona trying to get back to Memphis? Oh man, we met this girl named Cecilia and she, uh, she said, we're going to go to LA and pick up my boyfriend. And then we're going to drive straight to Memphis from LA. I said, all right. So about halfway there, her parents said, we're going to report your car stolen if you don't come to New York. So she said, I'm sorry, guys, uh, you got to get out. And we all just kind of looked at each other and said, OK, well, no hard feelings to you, but we're going to see what happens from here. And so we just got out and we had a bag full of oranges and a couple water bottles. And that was it. So you started off in 2012, you were in your early twenties at the time and already figured out in your mind, sort of how to brand yourself in good marketing there, asking the banana to jump around and dance <laughs> around your booth. So that was really smart. That's a great way to bring attention. So you can give yourself credit for that. You said, quote, I'll paint anything. I'll paint a mural, a sign, portraits, a roof, anything. I painted Homer Simpson eating a donut on the roof of a donut shop once, unquote. Tell us about that painting. So this was at a donut shop in McKenzie, Tennessee, and the owners ended up trading me donuts. And I think I got paid maybe a hundred dollars for it plus unlimited donuts. So I thought that was a great deal as a college student because yeah. every time I went there, they would just give me free donuts. And it was it was fun. It was kind of difficult because it was the roof was kind of asphalt. So it's hard to get the paint on there, but it was fun. You still have it. Do you have a picture of it? Yes. I bet that's really funny. <laughs> so it's 2014 and you decide that you're going to move back to Memphis and you got a job as a line cook at the five spot, which is a small cafe at the time back then in the back of Ernestine Hazel's. It was where uh, chef Kelly English was running the kitchen at that time. And it was there that you met a couple that owned another restaurant in Memphis that changed your life. Well, tell us about Patrick and, and Denny and, and what developed from that relationship. They came in there one day and I didn't know who they were. I just made some cordon chowder and uh, I asked them, I said, Hey, do you want a sample of it? We're trying to get this, you know, get people to taste new stuff. And they said, yeah. And they started talking to me. They were really sweet. Uh, after they left, Karen Brownlee, who used to work at Ernestine and Hazel, said, do you know who they were? I said, no. She said, they're the, they're the owners of the Majestic Grill. She's like, you should be careful what you were saying to them. I said, I wasn't saying anything crazy to them, Karen, but they would start coming in there more often. And one day, I think Patrick said something about coming to work for them. And I was so nervous. Uh, I just remember walking in there because I'd never been in there before. And I walked into the Majestic and I was just kind of overwhelmed because it was just so big and everything was so nice. And Patrick walked out in his nice white chef's coat and I was like, I was very intimidated. I didn't think I was going to get to work there, honestly, but it was a great experience. You must have made a big impression on him with that child or so. That was the start of something awesome. <laughs> now, Patrick said of you, quote, She's going to be a force in this industry, in this town. She is an amazingly talented cook, unquote. What was the most important lesson that you learned from him? 
Hmm. That's a hard one. He really, he taught me a lot of the basic stuff that I didn't know to begin with, that I, he, I guess he was surprised that I hadn't learned it, but I didn't get any really, I didn't go to culinary school, so I didn't get any formal training. So he took the time to actually teach me all these things and show me how to do stuff for caterings and just, and as a friend, I was going through a rough spot in my life and he actually took the time to be sweet to me and give me advice, personal advice, which he didn't have to do, but right. I mean, I was crying one day. I remember when he came up and just gave me a hug and I feel like he almost started crying too. Cause he was just, he's very, just a good guy, you know? It's hard to find genuine people like that in general. And especially for someone that you work for to take that interest in you. So that must've been a great feeling for you. It was. You said, quote, a mural can bring a room to life, unquote. How is a mural able to do that, Emily? If you're just looking at a wall, it's just a white wall or whatever. It doesn't really evoke any emotion from you. But if you put art on it, it can evoke happiness, sadness, whatever you want it to. And it just bright, it can brighten up a room or it can just change everything. So tell us about the mural behind you that, you, that you're working on right now. <laughs> So this is just a work in progress. Uh, I'm hoping next year I'm going to do this art show. I've got this plan and it's going to be an art show. I'm not going to go too much into the details. I don't want to spill all the secrets, but right. it's going to be big and it's, it's going to be great. So I want it to be about the back of the house. I want it to be about the cooks, the dishwashers, what goes on that you don't get to see out in the front because we're all hidden away in the back. Right. But we're still doing all sorts of stuff back there, but people just don't see it. So this is part of that. And this is actually Patrick in this picture standing at the bar at Majestic. And it's going to be like this whole, it's like backlit. So it's going to look really cool. It's only about a quarter of the way finished so far, but it's going to look good. You know, I have to tell you um, that you're, I love your post, you know, showing your artwork. And, and that's just amazing because I draw stick people. <laughs> and you're awesome but you know when you post pictures of food I take a quick glance and then I got to keep scrolling because every single thing that you post looks so good and no. it makes me so hungry so I'm going to ask you about a few of them today the first one is and I hope I pronounce this right delicata squash ravioli with braised mm. short rib tell us about that dish that was one of my favorite ones and um I just pureed the delicata squash, uh, mixed it with a little Parmesan and panko to kind of keep it firm where it's not gonna melt. And then we make all of our pasta fresh at River Oaks. So I just made some fresh pasta, rolled it out, made fresh raviolis and the short ribs we braise ourselves. And uh, now mm. I'm getting hungry just thinking about it. Oh my gosh, it. it sounds so but, good. And just, it was good. It was, I can't remember what vegetables, I think it was like peas and carrots. And then it was short rib sauce on top of it with big chunks of short rib. Mm. So do you have different specials that you do different days? Mm -hmm. So Monday through Thursday, we have a set special each day. And um, Monday is pork. Tuesday is the, why am I drawing a blank right now? It's okay. Uh, it's like we've got duck one day, we've got fried chicken, and we've got uh, macaroni gratin. And then Friday and Saturday, we get to come up with whatever we want. So whether it's me or Lewis Friday or Saturday, we get to make a fish special Friday. And then Saturday is just whatever. But it's different every week. That sounds awesome. You said, you once said, quote, never give up on your childhood dreams, unquote. Tell us about the picture that you drew when you were just four years old that you still have today. So... I didn't even know I had it until a few years ago. My mom was getting rid of this stuff. And she said, here's a box of your old childhood stuff. You, do you want it? I said, sure. And I was looking through it and I found that and I was kind of blown away because I mean, I always liked painting when I grew up, but I didn't know that the teacher said, so what do you want to be when you grow up? And I had written artists on there. 
well, she wrote it for me because my handwriting is so bad. Right. <laughs> that was, that's an awesome picture. So I, and I saw it on your page and I just thought that's great. Like I said, at four years old, you were a better artist than I am today. So it's amazing. No, no so that's that not talent. true. Yeah. You are, you were really good. Even back then you still were good. You knew that you could tell from looking at that, that you had an ability to do what you're doing today. It was going to come out at some point. So July 31st, 2017 is a significant date in your life. What happened on that day? 2017. Oh gosh. That's when I started working at River Roads. Yeah. How did so that come good. about? Hmm. At the time I was working for Patrick Riley at his pop-up restaurant, the front porch, it was downtown. It was really nice. And you got to see all the river boats come in. It was a beautiful restaurant. And uh, I just told him, I said, I kind of feel a little bit stagnant. Like I want to do something else. I want to do just something different, just a life change type thing, you know, and he told me, I said, who do you think I should work for? And he said, I think you should work for Jose. And so I said, okay, well, I'll go up there and eat dinner and just see what it's about. And then put in an application, but I wasn't expecting to get the job because I don't, I didn't know how much experience I needed or anything. So I kind of, at first I applied to be a dishwasher and he said, you can, you can be a line cook. And I said, okay. But I was so nervous my first day there doing a stage. I was like, this is something else. <laughs> so do most, most chefs go through culinary school, don't they? I think so. But I feel like a lot of the old school ones I know haven't been. Because when I was younger, it was a lot of people in the kitchen hadn't been to culinary school. It was just kind of like older men that were in there and they would teach you if you were lucky, they would teach you how to make an Alfredo sauce in the pan. They would teach you some secret that they knew. And it was, it was like an awesome day if they taught you something. You know? So someone that I know that uh, I grew up with, that uh, his uh, dad was a really good chef. And he once told me, and, and I never knew if this is true, because I'm not a great chef. Um, I'm a great microwaver. I'm a great, you know, person like that. <laughs> I can do a little bit, but yeah. He said that a lot of times the secret is in the sauces. Is that true? I think so. I think it's everything combined, but if the, if the sauce is good, it's over with. <laughs> so you just celebrated, you know, five years at River Oaks and you said, quote, though there have been many ups and downs, I appreciate everything you guys have taught me, all the memories we've made and wouldn't trade it for anything in the world, unquote. It sounds like you have a really good staff that you work with there, don't you? Yes. It's kind of like a family. Tell us a little and, bit about them, some of them, if you can think of a few things to share. I mean, everybody that stays there longer than a couple months, they're, they've got some, they've got a pair on them, if I can say that, because it's very difficult. Kitchens in general are difficult, but we do most of the prep there is made in-house. We don't have bagged stuff. So it's all made by us. And it's a very heavy prep kitchen. And every person there is part of the team. And if we lose somebody, then it creates a rift in the team. And we need every single person. We need the dishwashers. We need the front of the house. We need everybody in the back of the house working together or it'll fall apart. I was always taught growing up in sales, and you probably heard this before, the word team means, you know, together, everyone accomplishes more. And that's definitely true there. And I think you, you made a great point. You said about, you know, what people don't realize what goes on in the kitchen, in a restaurant. And you just made me think about it because I honestly don't really think about it unless you can see, you know, an open kitchen in a restaurant. But people really don't realize what goes on back there, do they? Mm -mm. They don't have a clue <laughs> unless they've worked in one, but right. I mean, there's a lot going on. A lot. You know, you've talked about how painting murals is calm in the kitchen can be, you know, sometimes crowded and uh, hectic. Um, they both bring you a ton of joy in, in your life. How do you balance, keep the balance between painting and cooking? 
they're both, they're both things I get to be kind of creative with, which is fun. And uh, the kitchen is more hectic. It's catastrophic. But it's also fun when we're going through a dinner rush and we're just, we're, we've got it. Everybody, the tickets just keep rolling in. It's almost like a high when everybody's just on it. And we just kind of look at each other. We fist bump. We're like, we've got this. Awesome. And it's like we're going through a mission or something. I don't know. It's like a finishing a race together. You probably get but, a little of a high from it too. Yeah. It's great. And it's great when the night's done, everybody's done a great job. The servers and the cooks were all telling each other, great job. Like y'all killed it tonight. That's a great feeling. But on the other hand, when something goes wrong and it turns into a bad night, then we're apologizing to each other at the end of the night and sorry this happened. But I'm sure but, you have many, many, many more good nights than you do bad nights. Yes. So that's awesome. It sounds like you have a great camaraderie there. So this dish, Hawaiian swordfish with pineapple beret, beurre blanc, and seared <laughs> zucchini. That sounds amazing. Tell us about that dish. Um, that was so long ago. I can't even remember. Because uh, during lunch, we have a different special every day, too. We have two different specials every day for lunch every day. So I can't even that's okay, but it sounds good. I mean, to have pineapple, and, and I've never even thought about a Hawaiian swordfish. I mean, I've heard of, you know, Cajun and, and blackened and things like that, but never Hawaiian. So that must have been really good itself. Mm -hmm. We had it flown in from Hawaii just because we were trying to uh, try out different fish companies. And the ones in Memphis are good, but sometimes we get them from just different places. And we try to uh, try the quality out from different people. You're painting stable transition you said you had to rent a u-haul for the first time ever to deliver the painting tell us a little bit about that special painting so that was for pedro velasquez he wanted it for his office and he said he wanted he loves horses so he wanted something that was involving horses but colorful but kind of cha chaotic and i can't remember how he explained it Kind of like life so i thought oh in life we go through transitions so stable going talking about like a horse stable it's like a stable transition through life creative how big was that painting it was 12 feet long by six feet <laughs> wow no wonder the u-haul so yeah that was huge how long did it take you to do that um i want to say five months four or five months maybe i'm not sure yeah because people don't realize i mean it's it takes you longer because obviously you have a life and you have work and everything in between so you're having to do it in between and everything so that's just amazing and i honestly i saw that picture best horse picture i've ever seen thank you i mean really it was and if people haven't seen that you got to go and she'll tell you later on about how to find her artwork but you got to go on her page and look at that picture because it really is just amazing Thank you. Cindy Mallard wrote, quote, oh my, such a wonderful meal. We dined at River Oaks restaurant this afternoon. Wonderful. Chef Gutierrez was gracious and kind. We enjoyed the conversation and appreciated him taking the time to chat with us. However, the highlight of our experience was seeing Emily LaForce. Emily is a former student of mine at Bethel University alumnus and chef at River Oaks in such a class act. Seriously. Thank you, Emily. These picks do not showcase your plates as they should. Everyone will just have to trust me and go experience it for yourselves, unquote. That must make you feel really good when you hear things like that from people, doesn't it? Yes, it does, especially uh, mentors. When I get compliments from mentors, those are what means the most to me. What did she teach uh, you at Bethel? Um, she wasn't actually my teacher she was um at the time I think she was the dean of students and now I think she's the vice president of the university but uh she was very into arts and English so she would kind of give me advice on those things because I majored in English from that school right all right this dish smoked pork tenderloin sandwich with apple bacon and fennel slaw oh 
Tell us about how that is prepared. That looks so that, good. That was good. I, we've got to make that again because it was a, uh, we had used it from a special the night before and I was just looking at it. I'm like taking little bites off of it, just tasting it. I'm like, this is so good. We've got to do something with this. So I made a, I think it was a Fresno aioli and some bacon and uh, made a slaw out of apples and carrots and I can't remember what else, but it was, and I think we made some Parmesan fries with it, mm. but it was, hmm. Just looking at those pictures, I've been to the restaurant a couple of times, but it's been a while. It's pre-COVID. Uh, I definitely have to come back soon because I only live about yes. 10 minutes from there. Because well, you got to come up there. Yeah, it, it looks phenomenal. You said, quote, in the end, it's all about how much time and effort you want to put into anything in life. Whatever you put your heart and love into, you can succeed. Even if it doesn't look like you want it from the beginning, just keep trying, unquote. What does that mean to you? So if you want something in life, no matter what it is, you can do it. I mean, if it's realistic, you can't just start flying off the ground. Well, I mean, maybe you can if you build something to do it. Right. But I feel like anything that you want is possible, but you just have to see the steps and how to do it. Like a painting, a painting is done in layers. Right now, this is like the first layer. But if I just sit here and I don't do anything to it, it's going to stay like that. So I haven't actually painted on this in a month because I've been working on a couple other paintings. But right now, look, if I make a mark, you could call that a mistake. You could call that a mess up. But at least you made a mark. You have to do stuff to get stuff to happen. You can't just expect it to happen. So now that I see that, I can fix it later. But it's better to do something and realize it's a mistake than to be too afraid to do it at all. Absolutely. You know? Does Patrick know you're doing that for the restaurant? Yes. I, sh I think I showed him a couple months ago. I bet I was he's taking excited. Pictures of, huh? I bet he's excited. <laughs> yes. I hope so. What does seeing the smiling faces of your customers, both in the restaurant and your artwork, you know, do for you when, you know, you hand them the artwork or you see them eating the meal and you see them smiling, how does that make you feel? It makes me feel great. Uh, sometimes I know this is kind of, might be seen as a little weird, but if one of the servers is bringing out the food and I'm standing near the door, I just kind of peek out the door. And if they're right there near the bar or something, I love to see when the food is placed in front of them. Cause that's the first thing you don't taste it, nothing. You just see it. And the reaction from is either just like, eh, whatever, or sometimes they're just like this. They're so excited. And that makes me so happy because that's the whole point. You want to make somebody excited. They came out to get a nice meal. They came out to get nice service. They want to be treated right. And they want great food. So when they, when I see that look on their face, I'm very happy with that. Not weird at all. It's because you have heart and you care about what you're doing. And so you want the customer to see that and you want them to be just as excited as you. Mm -hmm. you know, back in you know, April of 2021, you had to have an emergency uh, hysterectomy and you were out of commission for a while. And you talked about how your sister Melanie and brother Daniel worked at the hospital that you were in. And even though you were in a lot of pain, having them there must have been comforting. How were you able to get through all that? Um, my wife, Ashley was my biggest help during that time. Cause she, I could not have done it without her and I wouldn't be anywhere in my life right now without her, honestly, cause she kind of calmed me down a little bit. Cause I can be a little wild sometimes, but she helped me. I could barely even sit up and she would help me. She would bring me food when I could eat something and just, she was awesome. And seeing my siblings there was great too, because I was scared and, you know, they're both working there and they came and helped me too. My mom and they all helped. Everybody was just so sweet. And a lot of my friends brought food. Patrick Riley brought me food. Awesome. Jose brought me food. I mean, it was, it was really sweet. All the friends and family that were helpful during that time. 
it's so important to have and especially for patrick to bring you food especially i'm so much better than hospital food oh <laughs> <laughs> my gosh on another level i mean somebody to bring you just a good salad or something from like wendy's would have been nice but to have patrick bring you something that mu- that's another level i know it's sweet well, that obviously shows what kind of person he is. So November 13th, 2019, quote, she said, yes, I'm the luckiest person in the world, unquote. That was the day you asked your wife, Ashley, who you talked about to marry you. And you call her, quote, my favorite person in the world, unquote. In about a month on October 23rd, I believe, you guys are going to be celebrating your second anniversary. Tell us a little bit about Ashley and the life you guys share together. So she works at Gould's and she does a lot there. She does, I can't even list all the stuff she does. And she's worked there for maybe eight or nine years. I love everybody at Gould's. They're awesome. And uh, she is an amazing artist. She is like a crazy artist. If you think my art is good, hers is like way better. Wow. Yeah. She's very talented. How did y'all meet? We met online. Hey, that's normal today. I mean, mm-hmm. 20 years ago, you'd say that people were like, what? But now it's normal. It's where most yeah. people meet now is online. But I think we actually might have met when I had my art booth at the Cooper Young Arts Festival because in 2012, she went and she only took two pictures from the festival. And one of them was a picture of me standing behind my painting, which I find that kind of strange because no I feel coincidences. like yeah we probably had a conversation about it and everything that was foreshadowing of what was to come mm-hmm. so y'all been together for five years now mm-hmm. that's awesome sounds like from what you describe her she sounds like she must be just a wonderful person she's the sweetest person i know just the sweetest most caring she's really funny too and just extremely intelligent and it's just like everything all in one, just the best person I know. And have two people with such artistic talent to be together. That's just amazing. I bet you can sort of feed off each other and, and give each other pointers too sometimes. Yeah, she drew, uh, we, we did a mural together at uh, Saltwater Crab in Midtown and she drew the design and then I painted it up on the wall. Very cool. I haven't been there. How's that restaurant? I haven't been there in about, since it opened pretty much. So it was pretty good though. Cool. I like seafood. So I'll have to try that sometime. Yeah. So you guys have, I believe three cats and one dog. Is that right? Mm-hmm. And your cats are little bitty noggin and Oliver and your dog is, well, Osa. is that different so now? So My dog is actually right under me right now. Is that Osa? Yes. But a uh, noggin recently died. About- I'm so sorry. It's fine. She was just old. And then the other two are Little Bitty and uh, Oliver, but we call him Bag. I don't know why. <laughs> so what do, the, what do the, your animals bring to your life? How do, what do they bring to your world? Um, a lot of chaos, a lot of calm, a lot of love. They're just they're the sweetest babies ever, but Sometimes they get a little crazy and they'll run around and chase each other, but they're just, it's just nice having them around. They're just like little family members. So does your dog and the cats, do they get along? They're starting to, but the dog is maybe 10 weeks old. So she's still in her little puppy zone, but. And she's a baby driven shepherd. Mm -hmm. Awesome. She's sleeping right now. I have three miniature schnauzers and there's like a little pack. So I just having the love of dogs, the unconditional love, there's nothing like it at all. Mm-hmm. What are the most important lessons that you learned in your life? That's a tough one. Probably be responsible for what you say you're going to do. And if you say you're going to do something as hard as you can work to keep that promise because if you don't then people aren't going to believe you from then forward they're not going to and plus it just makes you feel bad and to just work hard if you're going to do something then do it and finish it don't just start something and stop it 
which I've done in the past with artwork, but then I remember that and I make myself finish it. But it's just, just be responsible, uh, love people, know that even if you disagree with somebody, you can find something that you have in common. If you talk through it, just try to talk to people about issues. Awesome. How can people find you online and follow you on social media to check out your artwork and, and also the dishes that you make at uh, River Oaks? Uh, on Instagram, it's just LaForce Artwork. And on Facebook, it's Emily LaForce Artwork. And if you haven't been on there, once again, you got to go on there and check it out. Like I said, both for the artwork and for the food dishes, because at the same time, you're going to see wonderful paintings and murals. And then it's going to make you really hungry and want to go to the restaurant to have Emily or Jose cook for you because the, the food is just looks unbelievable. And I'm sure it even tastes better. You know, Emily, you have such a positive attitude and, and you have a passion for life. And I think you're only about to be 33 in November. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And you just have such a bright future ahead of you. And I really appreciate you coming on today. It's been a pleasure for me. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. My pleasure. And hopefully down the road, we'll have you come back on and talk to you again about something awesome too. And I hope you come in the restaurant. I'll make you some food. Awesome. Sounds great. Thanks so much again. Thank you. Bye-bye.